Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and welcome back to another video. So the Xbox Series X and Series S have been out for just over four months now, and having used the Series X almost daily since launch, I thought it was time that I did a follow-up video to my first one, where I unboxed it and I gave them my first impressions. So this is my four months later review, and I'm going to cover things what I like, what I dislike, what I would improve, and what issues I have had so far. I'm also going to show you some gameplay of the various games and what it looks like on my TV. I also want to say thank you to Prime Gaming for sponsoring today's video. So starting with the controller, so the new Xbox controller still feels great and as you would expect after only a few months of use, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it at all. The thumbsticks still feel firm, there's no stick drift here, and the triggers feel solid as well. So the more that I've used it, the more that I like the grippy texture of the triggers as well. I've also picked up two additional controllers since launch, I've gone for the Shock Blue and I've also gone for the Pulse Red as well. Obviously these differ only in the colour choices, they don't differ in the functionality at all, but they look really nice. I've not got one yet, but there's also the option to go for an Xbox Elite Series 2 controller. Now it might be something that I go for in the future, but right now I really am happy with the normal controllers. The only thing that I might do is I might get myself a custom controller from Colorware, where you can kind of change the colour, you can go for any style that you like. I actually did it with the PlayStation 5 DualSense controller last week, in fact I even covered a dedicated video just on that controller. Unfortunately, the Xbox controllers don't come with built-in batteries. I know you can buy the play and charge kits, but I prefer using a dock. So what I actually do is I bought a Power A dock, and this comes with two battery packs and four rear covers. Now this means that you can actually use these, uh, this dock and these batteries on both the new Xbox Series X and Series S controllers, and also on the original as well. And also, I think this dock is probably one of the nicest looking docks that's out there. As for other accessories, I'm using a set of Astro A10s for my headset. Now I do actually have the new Xbox wireless headset on order as well, and that launches later this month. Now these cost about $100 or £90 if you order directly from the Xbox website, and they look pretty nice as well. I might actually do a dedicated video on these headphones if anybody's interested. I also have a SanDisk Extreme SSD plugged in. I'll explain later why I use this and what I actually use it for. Are there any other accessories I should be picking up for the Xbox? Anything that you would recommend? So I still really like the look of the Xbox. I think it's clean, it's stylish, and it's pretty minimal looking as well. Now I actually have it stored on my shelves here, as you can see, and I actually think it looks quite understated as well. Now I know there are wraps and there are skins out there that you can buy, but right now I've got no intention of doing anything to this console at all. I really do like the look of it. Now talking about the speed of the console, when it comes to the speed of the Xbox, it's absolutely rapid. Now I mean, it's kind of expected for a next gen console anyway, and over the time, you'll obviously get used to it, and this will no longer be a fast console in you know two or three years time. But it only takes going back to an old console like I did the other week. I actually turned on my PlayStation 4 just for the sake of it, and that's when you really realize just how fast these new consoles are. So whether I'm jumping into games, navigating the dashboard, or just booting up from cold, it's absolutely rapid, and this is definitely something that I will not tire of. Now if you've followed my channel for a while now, you'll know that I do primarily play on the PlayStation 5, but over the last few months I've played on the Xbox a lot. Now what I usually play on the Xbox are the exclusives that I cannot play on the PlayStation 5, and also I've been using Game Pass a lot. So games I would not normally go out and buy, but have been available or free to download if that makes sense, on Game Pass, they're the ones that I've been playing. And the backwards compatibility of the Xbox is just incredible. I mean, the fact that you can play almost all of your old favourite Xbox games on just one console is awesome. And there are so many games on here that I do want to play or replay, again, games I used to play back on the Xbox 360. Now, this alone is a massive, massive selling point for the Xbox. But if you're not interested in playing old games, well, the new games look absolutely incredible. So it's probably no surprise that one of my favourite games is Forza, Forza Horizon 4. Now this game, without any doubt, is one of the best racing games out there. It runs incredibly smoothly too at 4K60. I mean, it's almost faultless. The cars, the sounds, the views, even the weather and the time of day transitions just blows me away every single time. Now I've definitely spent more time driving around than actually racing on this, but it's just absolutely awesome. Another game that I recently picked up again was Gears 5, so I've been playing through that. So it's running at 4K 120, and it's silky smooth. Obviously the TV here is definitely helping, but the black levels and the detail in the dark scenes is really, really impressive. So if you've ever played Gears before, or you like third-person co-op games, this is definitely one to give a go. Another racing game that runs at 4K 120, and it actually only came to Game Pass a couple of weeks ago, and that is Dirt 5. Now, I have had this game since launch on the PlayStation 5, and that was when it was full of bugs, and trophies weren't popping, and it was a real pain in the ass. But since then, they've improved it quite a lot, and it's a lot of fun. So it was an arcade racing game, it runs super smooth, and it's really easy. It's one of those easy games you can just pick up and play, when you've got to spare like 30 minutes or so. 
and the fact that it's now included in Game Pass, I would highly recommend it downloading this game and definitely give it a go. So although I primarily game on consoles such as the Xbox, the Switch and the PlayStation 5, I do also play on my laptop sometimes and my MacBook Pro, believe it or not. Now I know it's for nothing intensive, but that's because I don't yet have a dedicated gaming PC. But over the last few weeks, I've actually been playing a free game that's called Valorant and a few other games as well while I've been sat at my desk. Now, as I am an Amazon Prime member, in fact, I think I've been with Amazon for probably like six or seven years now, I also benefit from Prime Gaming, and that includes the monthly drops, perks, and bundles that they regularly offer. So Prime Gaming and Riot Games, that's a developer behind Valorant, they're actually giving away a free item this month. So if you're already a Prime member, this Love Bite Gun Buddy is completely free for you. All you need to do is click the link in the description of this video and you can claim it now, but just bear in mind, this offer does expire on March the 22nd, so you do need to be quick. If you've not got Prime, well, you can actually sign up to that today. All you need to do is click the link in the description, sign up to Amazon Prime, and when you join Prime Gaming, you will then get a free Twitch sub and you get access to the exclusive game drops each month. And next up is Warzone. Now, I've played a few games of this over the last few months, and I don't know what it is, but I'm absolutely terrible at this game on the Xbox. I mean, I'm no pro gamer on the PlayStation 5, but on the Xbox, I don't know what it is. I'm just so bad. Maybe, maybe players on the Xbox are just better. I'm not really too sure, but I'm terrible, absolutely awful, but I've still enjoyed it and it obviously runs really smoothly as well on here. Now there are loads of other games as well that have been optimised for the Xbox Series X and the Xbox Series S already, and some of these include Ori and the Will of the Wisps, which looks absolutely stunning, you've got Assassin's Creed, Cold War, you've got Grounded as well, you've got Watch Dogs and you've got WRC 9. So there are plenty of games that have already been optimised for the Xbox Series X. And if you go into the App Store, you go into the actual library itself, you can actually filter by the types of games that you're interested in. So if you're interested in the 360 games or you're interested in games that are only optimised for the new consoles, you can do that. So I've mentioned Game Pass already, and this is actually a massive part of Xbox. So all of the games that I've already been playing so far that I've just mentioned, excluding Warzone, they are all included as part of Game Pass. So for £11 or $15 a month, you can get Game Pass Ultimate, and that gets you hundreds of games each month that you can play, and it also includes Xbox Gold as well. Now, you'll get to keep these games until you either stop paying for the subscription, or they are removed from the library in the future. Also part of Game Pass is the EA Play Library. So games like Need for Speed Heat, Madden, Plant vs Zombies, and Battlefield, they're all included as well in that Game Pass Ultimate price. And that's absolutely huge, and it's well worth the monthly fee. In fact, since I picked up the Xbox last year, I've not actually bought a single game at all outside of Game Pass. So every game that I've played or any game that my children have wanted to play, I've just only bought them from the Game Pass library. So I actually mentioned this during my Xbox vs PlayStation 5 video last year, but the Xbox Series X is still absolutely silent. It's actually quieter than the PlayStation 5. So whether it is on or off, you cannot hear it at all, other than the beep when you first turn it on. But after hours and hours of gameplay, I've never heard the fans kick in. I literally don't know what the fans sound like. As for the disc drive, well I don't actually have any discs at all, so I can't test that out, but I would imagine it was still quite quiet as well. So the dashboard and the overall UI of the Xbox Series X has kind of left me feeling pretty bored. Now it looks fine and it is very, very easy to use. It's a lot easier to use than the PlayStation 5, but as I've mentioned before, it's no different to the previous gens. I know it's evolved over time and it'll probably evolve again, it'll change again in the future, but it leaves me wanting more. I would have liked to have had a cleaner or a fresher look. But one cool feature though is depending on the last game that you played or the current game that you're playing, the background image of the dashboard actually changes. So here you can see the entire background is completely changed depending on the game that I'm playing. I also like the pop-up menu. So on the controller itself, if you press the Xbox logo, this is the menu that you see. It's kind of like a quick navigation. So while you're playing games, you can easily jump between party chats and view your settings or even swap games. So another awesome feature that I have actually enjoyed using, especially when I'm alternating between my gameplay and my children's gameplay, and that's Quick Resume. So not all games are compatible with this, unfortunately, at least not yet anyway. But what you can essentially do is close one game down and open another game up without actually losing the position that you're in. So here I've actually started on Gears 5, and without actually closing the game down or saving or returning to the home screen, I was actually able to then jump into Forza. And then after playing Forza for a little bit, I can then jump back into Gears 5 again. Now, the time that it takes to jump between games is quite quick. It's not rapid, but it's definitely a lot quicker than closing each game down individually or going to the save menu, then going back to the home screen, choosing a game, opening the next game up again, choosing your load or loading your game save, and then going from there. As opposed to this, just click a game, it loads it straight up and it goes to exactly the same part that you were last playing. 
So we know that the internal storage of the Xbox Series X is a 1TB SSD, of which just over 800GB is usable. So although 800GB is probably enough for most, there's also the option to expand this using the Seagate storage cards. So for about £220 or $220 on the Xbox website today, you can actually buy these official cards and they plug into the back of the console and that adds an additional 1TB of storage. And that keeps exactly the same performance as the internal memory. Plus they look pretty neat as well. What's great about these drives is you can actually play and store your optimised games for the Xbox Series S and X on here. Now you can also use the normal SSD drives like the SanDisk drives that I've got, but this will not work with playing Xbox Series X or S optimised games. It will only work with back compatible games. So if you follow my other gaming channel, which is Spawnpoint Gaming, you'll know that I regularly upload gameplay footage of games I'm currently playing on the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. So being able to record games and easily upload them is really important to me. Now the Xbox does support the option to record in 4K, which is absolutely awesome. However, it's not quite as easy as I first hoped it would be. So if you want to record for more than 30 seconds in 4K, you'll actually need a compatible 3.0 external SSD drive, and that will then allow you to record onto that instead of the internal drive, as it won't let you do that unfortunately. So I'm using a SanDisk Extreme SSD. Now I've only gone for the 500 gig version as I've got no intention of adding much more than that. So it needs formatting to NTFS. You need to plug it into a laptop. You can't just plug it straight into the Xbox, unfortunately. But once it's formatted, you can then plug it into the Xbox and it's ready to go. You need to go to the capture settings screen. You need to select the new drive and you need to set it as capture location. Now on the capture window, you'll also then have the option to change between the internal memory, which is all you would have if you didn't have the SSD plugged in. And now you can change it to the SSD. So in this case, I've actually called my my SSD Xbox Series X. So to capture games it's really really easy, you just need to press and hold the share button on the controller and then it will start recording to the SSD. And then you just press and hold again to stop that recording. So the issue is when you actually want to take that footage and upload it to YouTube like I do, you cannot actually upload straight from the Xbox. What you need to do is you need to remove that drive from the Xbox, you need to plug it back into your laptop and then you need to upload it manually. Now this seems all just unnecessary to me, whereas on the PlayStation 5 you can capture it on the console, you don't need an SSD, and you can upload it straight to YouTube. So hopefully Xbox offer this via an update in the future, which will allow you to upload your footage straight to YouTube like you can on the PlayStation. Or if you know of an easier way, please do let me know, because I do regularly upload my PlayStation 5 footage because it's so easy. Whereas the Xbox, the fact I need to unplug the SSD and plug it into my laptop, I can't be bothered to do it all the time, so I'd only upload maybe a few videos a month. So when it comes to issues or faults with the Xbox, I've actually only experienced one problem so far, although it has repeated itself about four or five times. And this is something to do with the connectivity between the console and the controllers. So for some reason, the console will just stop working with all three controllers, all at the same time as well. Now, if I actually turn the console off and on again, that won't fix it. The only workaround that I've found so far is to completely power it down. So remove the power cable out the back of the console, leave it unplugged for maybe a minute or so, and then plug it back in. And once I do that, then the controllers start to work again. Now, as I say, this has happened about four or five times, and it seems to be if I let one of the controllers turn itself off on its own, so due to inactivity, for example. And once it does that, that's it. All three controllers just disconnect, and I cannot use them until I power it down completely. So what improvements would I want to make to the Xbox Series X now that I've used it? Well, I think the first one for me, at least, is the gameplay capturing that has to be improved. You can't have to remove an SSD drive from the console to plug it into a laptop and then upload it to YouTube. You need to be able to do it from the console, so that definitely needs to be implemented. I'm surprised it's not on there already, to be honest. I'd also quite like the user interface to be updated, maybe something cleaner, maybe make the tiles smaller and make use of the wallpapers that you can see behind. I also think the controller should have come with inbuilt batteries. Now I know Xbox have never done this and I know a lot would argue that they'd rather replace a battery if it goes faulty than an entire controller when it dies. But I've never had a controller die on me so I've never had that experience. And that's about it really so I'm kind of clutching to be honest and most of the improvements that I'm requesting they're kind of software updates so that's not a bad thing either. So would I recommend you picking up an Xbox Series X over the previous Xbox One X? Yes, I definitely, definitely would. I mean, you're not really going to be getting any new games to play on it, but the games that are optimised for the Xbox Series X look absolutely incredible. On top of that, everything runs so fast and very, very smoothly. And plus, it's so quiet as well. So if you've not got a TV or monitor that supports the console's 4 capabilities, which is 4K, 120 and VRR, I would recommend still going for the Xbox Series X. Now a few months ago I actually did a comparison against the PlayStation 5 where I basically compared the pros, the cons of both consoles, so if you're not sure which one to go for, definitely check that one out. 
Well, that was my four month follow up review of the Xbox Series X. It's been absolutely awesome. I'm already looking forward to new games coming out later this year or into next year as well. Games including Outriders, uh, Back for Blood, Far Cry 6, and obviously Halo as well, whenever we see that. Are there any games that you're looking forward to? Any games that I should definitely be looking out for this year? Well, you've just made it to the end of this stupidly long video, so thank you for sticking with me. If you drop a nice Xbox in the comments, I will give you a thumbs up as I know you've stayed to the end. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit that like button as it really helps me out. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time.